and welcome to the official AFC Bournemouth podcast coming to you from Vitality Stadium. We're here to bring you closer to some of the personalities connected to the club, be it players, staff, management or people from in and around the community. Now today we've got another exciting guest, but before I introduce you, it's time to say hello to my co-presenter, Neil Perrett, who has been reporting on the Cherries for 30 years. Neil, how are things? Yeah, good, good, very good. Really looking forward to today's podcast, today's guest. I'm not going to say who it is, but I've watched this team a few times this season. Really exciting team to watch, scoring lots and lots of goals, um, and this is going to be a good podcast. Well, as you say, today's guest is very exciting and very topical indeed. She's fresh from scoring four goals in the FA Cup win over St Austell and she's lining up for another big game at Vitality Stadium as our women's team expect a record crowd here next month. So without further ado, I'm delighted to welcome striker Lucy Cooper onto the AFC Bournemouth podcast. Lucy, thank you so much for joining us. How are things? How have you been? All good. Yeah, excited to be here. It's always a pleasure to do anything involved with the club. You know how much I love it. So yeah, just excited to get chatting. Now, we're going to get straight into it because we're top of the league, you're top of the goal scorer charts and we're into the first round proper of the FA Cup. It's been a fantastic start to the season. Just tell us about it from your perspective. Definitely. It's like Neil said, it's an exciting team. It feels exciting to be part of it. You know, scoring goals, um, winning games, it's perfect. It's the team environment is absolutely amazing. The girls, we're all getting so well. Um, it's really exciting to see what's going to happen this season. And yeah, like you said, big win yesterday in the FA Cup. So we're looking good. Now, in the first round proper, you've drawn Bridgewater at home. We were talking just earlier there about all these home draws you're getting in cups. Just give us your reaction to playing them for third time this season, I think. Yeah, well, love playing at home, like all the clubs. You know, we've got a really good fan base at the minute. We're getting lots of new supporters coming in. Um, and yeah, playing at home is always great with the atmosphere that we can create. Um, yeah, all the girls are happy with that too. And with Bridgewater as well, sorry. it's We've played them before, so we know a little bit about them. So we can do some analysis on that. Um, so, yeah, it'll be exciting. I don't want to put too much pressure on you, but I was looking at the uh, prize fund for the yeah. Women's FA Cup and it's it's quite substantial. It's £4,000 for winning the game this weekend, just gone, and another £6,000 at stake. Is, does that, do you ever think about things like that? Honestly, not, but it just shows the development of women's football already in such a short space of time, you know, the funding that's coming in too. Um, the girls, we don't really think about it that much. Obviously, it will help, but... At the end of the day, we're just there to go out for 90 minutes and kick a ball around the pitch and hopefully get a win. Now, the FA Cup must hold fond memories for you. I know you scored a dramatic injury time winner against Bournemouth Sports in the first round on your debut in yeah. November 2021. Tell us about oh, that day. It feels like a very long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was, it was an incredible day. Um, obviously played for the club since I was... 11 I think and to work through from under 12s 14s 16s played for the development team then to come in um, and be subbed on in that game I got the best memories of it and then obviously to score you know I play football to score goals as a striker that's what I want to do um, so to come on score and end up getting the winner just incredible yeah sometimes I, I like looking at the photos from that you know when when I'm feeling a bit down just to show that you know there's always some positive there and to carry on scoring goals. Just going to go back to the, where it all started for you, your football journey. I've interviewed a couple of girls from the women's team and they told me that they had to start off playing for a boys team. Was was that the case for you? No, I've had a really, like most young girls, you know, I've loved my journey that I've taken from a young girl. I started playing in my primary school. That's where I first started playing. So I never played for a boys team, but... In, when I was really young at St Mark's, my primary school, we used to play on concrete pitches at break time. You know, we'd run out with our little boot bag, put our AstroTurf boots on, and then we'd play. And I was the only girl in the whole school that played then. And so I love playing with the boys. They're all really great. You know, they just treated me as equal. And as you're younger, you don't realise it. But now I've had time to think. It's really great. They obviously treated me that way. So I played for them. And then one of my teachers said, you know, Bournemouth is when we first started up the girls' programme. I was like, Bournemouth are looking at trials, you should go and trial. And then I did, and I guess the rest is history. But um, yeah, I've been at Bournemouth my whole whole career. And yeah, I love it here. And just tell me, Broadstone girls, do you have, oh, yeah. have a spell well, there? <laughs> yeah, I played for Broadstone. So like I said, I played for with the boys at primary school and then had a spell for a year or so at Broadstone. And they were like my first proper team. Uh, we used to play in bright pink socks, which was, I wasn't a massive fan. It was an orange top, black shorts and fluorescent pink socks. And they were my first team. And that's when I first started getting the buzz for scoring goals. I used to be a centre forward even then. Um, played for them and then obviously tried for Bournemouth. 
As someone that is clearly into her fashion, <laughs> orange and pink. Yeah, I was not a fan. One of the, the manager was one of the girls' dads and the daughter was like, oh, can we play in pink socks? The manager was like, yeah, we'll do it. And I remember rocking up and I've been like, oh God, pink socks is really not a bit of me. Um, but I loved it there. It was my first proper team environment. And I remember my first game that I played for them I scored two goals and then the game got abandoned because it chucked it down with rain but still I remember that game and being first introduced to proper girls football and you can see the development already from when I played then to how it is now so I went back to my primary school a few weeks ago um, for work experience and they already had two or three girls teams and it was just incredible over the space of seven years to see I was the only girl playing then to now you've got fully fully fledged girls teams so yeah it was great for you obviously it kind of links into my next question you joined AFC Bournemouth in 2016 seven years ago as you say what was the women's setup like then if you can compare it to now you know so much has changed over such a short space of time yeah it's, it's been incredible to see the development because I've been here the whole time I can really see every year how it's changed so quickly um, and it's obviously it was very different when I first joined because there were less girls playing it was less and like with the women's England women's team mm -hmm. it wasn't as big a thing but now to see how many girls teams there are and just to look at some of the under 10s and 12s girls they are 10 times better than I was when I was younger it really is incredible to see that even to what think in like five years time how incredible that like young progressing coming up um, so yeah it was very different but to see the journey has been incredible. Now, you were top goal scorer in every age group, it would be fair to say. Yeah. I, you kind of mentioned it earlier, but I take it you were always a centre forward. Did you ever experiment with any other positions? <laughs> no, I've literally been a centre forward since I could kick a ball. Um, when I was really little, my parents used to take me to the beach and I used to kick a ball along the beach. And even then, all I could think about was just kicking it in a little goal or between like pebbles. I wanted to score goals. Um, and then with the boys um, at my primary school, to playing for Broadstone to then Bournemouth, always been centre forward. Steve put me right in left wing a bit last season and it was great to get another experience, another point of view, but the whole time I was like, I want to be that centre forward. I want to score goals. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm always willing to try new things for the team, but I definitely have my preferences. <laughs> you had some international recognition playing for England schools under 15s representing Dorset. Tell us about that yeah, experience. That again, just incredible experiences playing international football, um, did loads of trials up and down the country with, you know, me and my dad would go and then my mum would come to trials everywhere and then just working through each trial, you know, getting the email like, you're through to the next round, through to the next round, you know, it builds up your hope. And then to finally, I was at school when my dad phoned, we're not allowed phones at school, so don't tell him, um, <laughs> but he phoned and I went and hid in the toilet and he told me I was in that feeling is just, it was incredible. And then from there to go on and represent my country, with the rest of the girls, again, just another incredible experience that I'll remember forever. Was it Holland? Yeah, so we did, we went um, to Holland for a few days on like a training camp and played like um, Eindhoven and there, and then we played Ireland, Scotland and Wales, but it was during COVID, so we planned like this big tournament, like the Bob Doherty, no, was it the Bob Doherty? I think it was a Bob Doherty. It's like a big tournament that all the school teams, they kind of go and play, but COVID unfortunately ruined it. But even that, I still had the chance to play so many incredible sides and play with players who now are breaking through into WSL teams. Um, incredible experience. Now, you've had a whirlwind since you've broken into the first team here, but you had to wait until your 16th birthday to actually play for the first team. Was that, I know rules are rules, I get that, but was that a source of frustration for you? I mean, it was, I wouldn't say frustration, it was just more excitement, counting down the days, waiting, when Steve said that he want to bring me into the first team set up to train. So I trained with the girls before I turned 16, um, you know, just waiting for opportunity. And then whilst I was training, I'd go and play for the under 16s to get the game experience as well. And then I was just counting down the days. And then after, shortly after my birthday, I played for the development team, um, did really well there and then came up into the first team from there. And Luckily, I've been there ever since. Just tell us about that step up into the National League. I know perhaps you might not have too much to compare it with, but how how tough have you found that, that league? It was, it was obviously really daunting as a young girl who hadn't had that experience before, but it was incredible. I love the competitiveness of football in general, so to play against 
women twice your age who are fitter, stronger, faster. It just already in the space of two years I've been with the first team, it's improved me so much and I'm continuing to improve from that. So I, I love it and I wouldn't change it. Now you won the Strategic Solutions Goal of the Month Award in February 2022. I can see the smile yeah. on your face <laughs> as we look back at that. It was a brilliant strike against Paul Town, although your biggest fan... Your dad, Rich, <laughs> he missed the goal, didn't he? I Tell know, us about that. fuming, still fuming at him for that. Um, it was a great game and I remember it because there was, I had a chance uh, like five minutes before I scored and I passed it and Maisie turned around to me and was like, like Coops, you've got you to take a shot next time. You know, you're in, you're confident enough, you know, take that touch and hit it. And then five minutes later, if that, the, another like identical chance came and I was like, let's just hit it and hope for the best. And... Yeah, it was a really great moment for me and, you know, to them win the award as well. It was, it was amazing. And your dad? Yeah, not, still not very happy about that. <laughs> yeah, he, um, he missed it, I think. I think he was messaging my mum about, you know, how I was getting on because she couldn't make it for that game. So she was, he was probably messaging her and then, yeah, looked up and the ball was in the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us a little bit about your family, your mum, your dad, your brother Joe. I understand how they've helped you and been there for your footballing journey. Definitely. My family, I love my family, a really tight group. Um, and throughout everything, you know, I've played football since I could walk. They've been there every step of the way. Um, my brother as well, you know, having to drag him along. For, he's not the biggest football fan, so having to drag him along for all the matches. So my parents come and watch. Um, my dad played football as well when he was younger so he loves it and he loves living it through me as well it's that shared experience um but yeah I love my family and it's been great I'm really lucky to have such a close family that can follow me up and down the country now you're a Bournemouth girl through and through a big Cherries fan when did you first start coming to watch the men's team here and what are your memories as a child yeah so always it's always been Bournemouth for me um love the club and I started supporting them when I was at primary school, you know, I remember sitting with my dad and th as I was first getting into competitive football, like, you know, I should support a team and my dad's a West Ham fan and I've got people who support Arsenal and Tottenham in my family and I was just like, I can't really do that. <laughs> um, and, you know, we just thought, we were like, you know, it's a local club, um, let's just support them. And I remember getting my first Bournemouth shirts for my eighth, ninth birthday. Um, and then from there, just going to watch the men's team with my dad. But yeah, I've, I've always loved the club and everything it stood for. Tell us a little bit more about your brother because you haven't, he's got a bit of a talent as well, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah, so um, my brother does musical theatre and drama and he's really good at singing. Um, so I do all the sport and he does all, I leave all the singing and dancing to him. Um, and it's always been like that from a young age. You know, I do keep you up to a football in a corner and he'd be singing along to Frozen or whatever it was at the time when he was really, really little. Um, so it's great, you know, that we have such opposite passions. Um, and so he goes on a Saturday to do his drama for the whole day Saturday. And then on the Sunday, I go and play the football. So it's got a really great balance in the family. Um, and my parents have just been incredible at supporting both of us, no matter what, you know, they just they just want us to be happy for it all. And that's just the best thing. There's no pressure to do anything, to try anything, you know, just do what you want to do. And if that makes you happy, then who cares what people think? Go ahead and do it. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's great. So when you used to come and watch with your dad when you were younger, who were your favourite players? I used to love watching Callum Wilson, um, Matt Ritchie as well. I used to love it when he would play. But yeah, Cal seeing Callum Wilson score goals, yeah, I think that's probably why I love scoring goals so much myself. Have you got any idols in the women's game? Oh, Ellen White for me is just is that natural goal scorer. She's one of those that just knows where the goal is. She will score goals in any situation, and I've always loved that. And randomly, uh, Steph Holton. I always used to really like watching Steph Holton. I think it was just she's such a good leader on the pitch and as a captain. Um, yeah, I remember. In my school, I used to go on a Word document on the computer and copy and paste pictures of like the lionesses on my A4 Word, print it off, and then I put it next to my bed. So whilst I could go in my bed, I could be like, okay, I need to be like you when I'm older. Um, and yeah, it was always Steph Holton and Ellen White. But you know, all all there's so many incredible women's players now, especially that younger girls can look up to, and I think that's really helped the development of women's football, especially over the past few years. Now, you're here today because you're on half term. I know you're in your final year at Parkstone Grammar School. Just tell us what you're studying there. 
Yeah, so I'm year 13 now. I'm doing year of my A-levels, which is exciting, I think. <laughs> um, I'm doing A-levels in PE, biology and psychology. Um, I've been at Parkstone since year seven. So about the time I started playing for Bournemouth as well. And I've stayed there since and I love it there. You know, it's, it's an all girls school. So it's interesting going from a primary school where all I'd do is play football with the boys to having to wear a skirt every day, which was a new experience as well. Um, but, you know, I love it there and the PE department have been incredible with my football and promoting the women's team as well. Um, so yeah, I've got A-levels coming up in a few months and then we'll see what happens from there. Now, unconfirmed rumours tell us that you take your homework on the bus <laughs> to away games. Is this true? Maybe. Yeah, no, it is. Um, <laughs> you know, I, it's at the minute, I've obviously a lot going on with mock exams and throughout my GCSEs as well. I like maintaining positive grades and I strive for the best in everything in my life. You know, I'm a bit OCD. I want everything to be perfect. I want to be the best that I can be in everything, whether it's football or school. So yeah, there's many occasions where I bring like sets of little revision cards. I brought a whiteboard and pen on the coach at one point, then I'd sit in the corner and all the girls would look at me like, you know, we've got a game in an hour. Why are you doing your biology revision? <laughs> um, but at the time, you know, it needed to be done. and. I'm glad it did because I've achieved really good grades in GCSEs and I'm hoping for even better in A-levels too. Do any of the girls try and help you? I mean, Gemma <laughs> Hilly is a teacher for starters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually talking to Gemma a bit in the changing room yesterday about PE and Molly Gladwell was talking about electrophoresis or something in biology, you know, just random changing room talk. Um, but yeah, I know some of the girls, I, I've, I've helped Holly with her revision before and all her she'd bring her homework on the coach you know I'd help with that but they've all been great you know it's it's funny that we can joke about it too. Now in terms of individuals in the squad someone that is la larger than life Katie Scadding has she <laughs> mentioned that she's met Prince William recently at she all? She has yeah she, she's brought that up once or twice um <laughs> yeah you know we love Scads. Scads is the glue that binds the team together she really is incredible and for everything, you know, how she plays football, but just the team spirit that she creates and the environment, you know, without her, I think we'd all be a bit lost. Um, yeah, so she's a great gal. I remember interviewing her that day when she just met Prince William and she was disappointed that he didn't ask her about any other penalty saves in the Hampshire <laughs> Senior Cup final. Yeah, I know. Well, she should do because, yeah, that was an incredible day and Scads really was the best and she won us that game you know that penalty shootout, penalty shootout um i'd bring it up to everyone if i could too <laughs> now i also understand that you do get ribbed for your taste in music <laughs> tell us a little bit about your taste in music yeah so one of my biggest hobbies you know aside from football i love my music um all kinds of music all the girls laugh at me because they say i've got the music taste of a middle-aged woman or middle-aged man you know i listen to everything um it depends what mood i'm in but I like Oasis, Blur, um, I've been to Arctic Monkeys and Royal Blood concerts, so I like the rock indie side as well, you know, it's great for football to get me pumped up. But then in the changing room when Whitney Houston comes on or ABBA comes on or Stevie Wonder, you know, anything, um, yeah, I love it and it's good preparation for a game, I think. Who is the dressing room joker and tell me about some of their pranks? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think we all bring something to the changing room, you know, before and after a game, before a game, depending on what game it is, you know, it's a lot of nerves and I'm a really nervous person before games, so I like just sitting there and thinking. Um, but you've got big personalities like Scads, you know, like we said, and um, Blez, Helen, she loves the music as well. So, you know, we'd be in the corner doing our hair and she'd get her hairspray can out and we'd do a little karaoke, you know, all of that. Um, but then when Steve comes in, you know, it's time to focus. But then after, if we win a game, it's incredible. You know, that's, that's the best part of a, of a match day experience. If we win a game, the changing room after, you know, the music playing, everyone dancing, it's great. You must have been doing quite a lot of that this season. Definitely, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on the highlights, um, been really good. Now, we know you're studious, you've told us, and you're something of a bookworm as well. So just tell me, what are you reading at the moment? Yeah, girl's going to rinse me even more for this. <laughs> yeah, um, I love I love reading too, and I'm quite a like hyper person, you know, I overthink a lot and I've got quite an active brain, so it's good for me to just have a few, a few minutes to read and try and relax a bit. Um, I like thriller books at the minute. Um, there's a book series called um, Girl the Dragon Tattoo that I'm reading. It's like a thriller Book and I've read all sorts, you know, Hunger Games, all the classics, um, Harry Potter, you know, you name it, I've read most of them. 
Now, are, are you keen on any other sports? Are there any other sports that have ever tickled your fancy or given it a go? Maybe you're on holiday or just down the park? Yeah, so I've tried a bit of everything. I think like most, football's always been my passion. That's the first kind of big sport I found and have stuck with. But um, enjoy athletics and sprinting, especially in primary school. I did a lot of running then. Um, and, you know, at one point I remember doing at Kings Park, doing town sports. I think I was, if I remember right, it's just going back to like year five or six. I was, think I was fifth fastest in Dorset at 100 metres at one point when I was wow. about 11. There you go. That's a little secret fact. Um, so, yeah, I enjoyed sprinting. Um, netball's always winded me up a bit because, you know, at all girls school, we play a lot of netball and I can never really get into it. But yeah, I've tried, tried all sorts, but you know, football's my passion and everything always comes back to football. Have you watched the David Beckham documentary yet? Of course I have, yeah. I watched, um, we were watching a bit on the coach, I think, and the girls were talking about it because um, Blez is a massive Beckham fan. So we were talking about it on the coach. I think I've got one more episode to watch, but yeah, no, it's a great series. Well, I won't ruin it for you. Now we've talked a lot about some of the other girls in the squad, someone we haven't talked about, Abby Jones, vice captain. Talk us through our goal celebration. Yeah, yeah, she's great, you know, and it's, it's great to see others score and I have as much joy celebrating goals of others than I do myself. So, yeah, you know, whenever anyone scores, it's such a team response. You know, Steve always says he doesn't care who scores, it's the fact the team have scored because we've all contributed to it. So, yeah, when Abby scores, you know, it's always great. Um, so, yeah, it was a lovely experience as well. Just so I know, do they play football at your school as well? Yeah, so they do. When I first joined in year seven, there wasn't as many. So I'm the only girl really in my year that properly plays. But I'm in year 13 now, so I can look down at all the younger years and see from year seven to year 11, there's teams across all the years. And that's incredible to see. You know, I've gone and helped out sometimes with the coaching with some of my PE teachers and the talent already as young girls is really great to see. Do all your friends at school take an interest in how you're doing for the team and are they going to all be listening to this podcast and stuff? <laughs> yeah, hi guys, if you listen. Um, so yeah, you know, my friendship group, they're not overly sporty. I'm like the sporty one uh, in our friendship group, but it's great to say they always take such an interest in me and my sport and they brought tickets to come see us at the Vitality, which is really great. Um, but yeah, again, like my family, it's great to have friends that support you for everything and to have friends aside from football as well because you know as much as I love football it's not everything so it's great to you know go to school and discuss other things as well. Now you've obviously done very well this season you've got 11 goals already um, and as with men's football when players are doing well other clubs can take an interest now I know that that has happened with you and a club from a higher level showed an interest in you what persuaded you to stay here? Yeah I would say it was an interesting experience you know it was probably the toughest few weeks I've had in a while because mentally it's just a lot having another option. Bournemouth has been my life, like I've said, for years. Um, so lots of sleepless nights, restless, struggling to concentrate because it was just a lot for me to think about. But it just got to a point where I was at school and I was just imagining not wearing a Bournemouth shirt and that made me quite upset. And yeah, just the thought of not putting the Bournemouth shirt on with Cooper 9 on the back. I was like, I don't know if I'd survive like that. And then, yeah, I went home and I spoke to my parents and again, family have been incredible the whole way through. They were like, this is your decision. You know, you've got to choose what's best for you. And at the time I was like, I can't, right, as of right now, I can't imagine being anywhere else. Now, ahead of the start of this season, the women's set up here came under the direction of the football club through Bill Foley's ownership, having previously been overseen by the Community Sports Trust. What changes would you have noticed? Only a short while ago, but what, what sort of changes have you noticed as a player? Definitely, you know, the support, I think, is the number one thing, you know, obviously financially, but as well just mentally knowing that you've got someone coming in who's taking a massive interest into women's game. It's really good for confidence of the team and to have those people come and watch us at games is also incredible, you know, and it just goes to show that the team's only getting better. We're only on the up and yeah, the sky's the limit. Now, the, the new ownership sanctioned the signing of five new players for the women's team at the start of the season. Gemma McGuinness, Daniela Kaczynska, Olivia Vendito, Gemma Hillier and Alicia Buckingham. Just tell us a little bit about those, those five players. Yeah, you know, it's, it's incredible to have such great players come straight into the, into the setup. 
they came in immediately and made a massive impact, you know. Um, great people, great players, and they've only just boosted our team more, you know, from obviously a football point of view, but they're also amazing people. You've got personalities like Gemma Hillier, our captain, born leader on and off the pitch, you know, helps everyone for everything, messages me after the game, you know, I can struggle sometimes mentally um, with football and anxiety a bit as well. And she's always there to message and make sure that I'm okay. And she does it to everyone. And the rest of the girls, yeah, come in and it's a real great team environment at the minute. We're just like a big community. And yeah, it's great to be a part of. Competition for places must be fiercer than ever. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's it comes with football, you know. All the girls, we all get on so well, but, you know, we're, we are fighting each other for places and, you know, we're, we're all here to <clears throat> do a job. Um, so, yeah, competition for places as well, but, you know, we're, we're all going to be needed at some point and we are all needed at some point. We're not just in the team to stand there. You know, we're, we're all great players and there's a place for everyone. It just depends on the situation. And what about the women's game in general, the Euros last summer, the World Cup this summer, Mary Earp's shirts, absolutely everything. is It's flying at the moment. Definitely, yeah. And that just shows, like I've said before, the development of women's football. It's the quickest I've seen any sport in general just accelerate, you know, across all aspects from young girls playing, from the shirts we were talking about, from how many people are watching it on the TV. It's really great to see and to be part of this journey throughout the years. We can look back on this in 50 years time and just see, wow, how much is come on. Um, so yeah, it's a really great environment. I mean, even now, you know, we look at the here and now with Bournemouth and we have girls only soccer schools. We have record crowds down at Ringwood, which, you know, is 15, 20 minutes away <laughs> yeah. from Bournemouth to come and watch Definitely. the girls play. And then we've got player appearances. I think five of the girls went to a, a primary school to go and meet some kids and give out some prizes and, and do a question and answer session. Even in Bournemouth, you must have noticed a huge yeah, difference. Definitely. You know, and we we can't take these things for granted. You know, when I walk off the pitch yesterday, high fiving little kids who said well played you know that's just it's the best feeling ever you know it's almost as good as scoring girls um having kids you know shout your name and want autographs and all of that it really is incredible to be part of and yeah it's only going to get better do you ever get recognized sometimes not all the time like not massively like i wouldn't be walking up the street and someone yeah. be like oh there's lucy cooper um but, you know, young kids that I've met or I've had messages on Instagram from old teachers and, like, people coming to watch our games, it's really great. But hopefully it's going to get even better too. One day in the future, do you yeah. have aspirations to play for your country? Of course. Yeah, 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 definitely. I think all footballers have aspirations to play for their country. You know, that's something I've dreamed about. Like, when I said earlier, I printed off pictures of the lionesses and put it next to my bed. Um Always wanted to, you know, put the free line shirt on and, yeah, we'll see what happens in the future. I just want to go back and ask you a little bit more about Gemma Hillier there because that, that's quite an interesting point you made there. That I mean, bearing in mind you've only known her a short period of time and she's almost treating you like a long-lost friend. That must be quite <laughs> reassuring and comforting at times. Yeah, you know, she's great, you know, great captain, great person. She was in the team when I first started training with the first team when I was 15. And then she went to Dubai to go teach for a bit. And now she's come back, you know, she's just come straight back into the environment. She obviously played for one before, so she knows what it's all like. But, you know, obviously coming back into a team, it can be daunting, but, you know, you don't get that impression from her at all. She's just come straight in and she's a great person to have around the team. She's cool, she's relaxed, great on the pitch, but then we'll always have your back. And then you've got somebody like Gemma McGuinness moving over from Ireland to come and play here. And Daniela, who's from Poland and mm. I think her parents are coming over for, yeah. the, for the big game at Vitality. Just just that shows commitment, if you like. 100%. Again, those two amazing girls, you know, Gemma to come in and just score goals for fun. Like you watch her on the ball, she plays like Messi. Um, you know, Daniela coming in and saving goals, it's really great. And it just shows, like you said, the commitment and how incredible it is here and what we've got going. Um, yeah, we've got a really good team. Now, we know there's a big game coming up at Vitality Stadium on the 5th of November. There was a big game here last season, uh, but it ended in a nil-nil mm. draw. And I know that you told me that you were a little bit disappointed about that day. Yeah, I think so. You know, as like I said, as a striker especially, I want to score goals and the team want to score goals and we're playing to win. So nil-nil draws are always confusing games because you haven't lost, but you haven't won either. So... Hopefully this year, you know, we're going we're gonna to score some bangers, get some great goals and hopefully get the win. 
talking of bangers, you've obviously <laughs> read the next question. So the women's team host Portishead here at Vitality Stadium on the 5th of November. Can we expect some fireworks? 100%. Hope so. <laughs> yeah, you know, and a big game for us. There will be nerves. I will definitely be very nervous for the game. But, you know, just got to go in. It's a massive opportunity for the girls to show everyone, you know, this is how good a team we've got this year. You can see it already in our results and clips from the goals we've scored. But to go out and put on a great display would be great. Now, I've been to a few games at Ringwood this season and Zoe touched on the fact that there have been some big, big crowds there. But it's going to, it's going to, this is going to be, there could be over five, maybe 6,000 here. Definitely. What is that going to be like? It was 3,000 last year. Yeah, it's going to be incredible and shows that in the space of a year, you know, we've more than doubled how many tickets have been sold. So to see all the faces, you know, in the crowds of the young girls that we're inspiring, as well as the older fans, who you know, just enjoy watching football, you know, and it can be frustrating to see, you know, online and elsewhere, you know, it's never perfect. It's not everyone's obviously going to love women's football, but, you know, we're encouraging just come down and watch, you know. You, we, you could really, we play some great stuff. We play great football and it's just a lovely environment to be part of. Now, I'm going to hand you a photograph now. It's been sent, it's been <laughs> oh, sent no. in by a member of your fan club. <gasps> oh, my days. I have not seen this photo in years. Where have you got this? Right, so it's a picture of you in your cherries kit. About how old were you there? Oh, my God. Too young. Um, seven or eight, maybe? Nine? And you are pictured with your cousin, Ben Cooper, who is yeah. a coach on our Community Sports Trust. Now, in all seriousness, I think he's helped you along the way with coaching definitely. and things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, that was that's my first Bournemouth shirt, the Cabrini one. Uh, I think I had Lucy Five on the back and, you know, Ben's great guy, you know, to play for the club, you know, at youth level, someone to aspire to. Even for me as a young age, I remember going to watch him and then to be part of the coaching team now, you know, I see him all the time and it's great that he's continuing to inspire other people as well. Now for you, it's quite hard to sometimes think, you know, you're only 18 and you only turned 18 a few few weeks ago. How did you celebrate? I was pretty relaxed, I think, actually, you know. Um, obviously, I had football on the Friday, so it was my birthday, I had sick form. Um, I went and got a tattoo, which was interesting. Um, always wanted one for years and took my mum with me and we went. I went and got one. Um, and there, uh, came home and, yeah, chilled out for the rest of the day. Now, there's a little bit more to the tattoo story. <laughs> Come on, just tell us a little bit. Expand on that yeah. and about your mum, because it's quite interesting. Yeah, so I've always wanted a tattoo from a really young age, you know. Um, and I spent ages figuring out what I wanted to get, where I wanted to get it. We're not allowed to sick form, so again, don't tell them, please. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we I thought thought it through, know what style I wanted. And my mum got a tattoo when she was 18 as well, and she got a little Cupid angel on her 18th. And I was like, you know, let's let's get the same. Um, so I've got an, again, I've got a little Cupid. I like to think it's better than my mum's, but. Um, I got that on my 18th as well. Um, Dad's not a massive fan of tattoos, so I didn't talk to him loads about it. He knew I was getting it, but <laughs> I got it and then was like, here you go, Dad, this is all I got. Um, but yeah, it was a lovely experience, you know, and to go with my mum as well. It's something that, again, just shows the closeness of my family. Um, yeah, great experience. And, and you were allowed to treat them to their first drink on your 18th yeah. birthday as well, yeah, is that I right? Yeah, I did, yeah. So I went and got the tattoo and then I ended up buying them a drink, which <laughs> I don't know if that's normally what people do on their 18th. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, my dad you know, took me to the pub and was like, right, it's, it's my daughter's 18th. You know, she's going to buy me a drink. I was like, oh, God, Dad, like, let's just <laughs> keep quiet. Um, so, you know, that was lovely um, to, you know, sit with them and it rounded off a really lovely day. Now back to the football, if you could plot the next few years just how you would want it, how would it look for you? Oh, that's a great question. You know, I think just want to continue developing, you know, promotion is what we're all after at the minute. You know, we're winning games, we're scoring goals. Um, I'm going to love this team, you know, and I think the sky's the limit, like I said before, with this. We're going to keep working hard, you know, there's, there's a lot more we can do. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens, but we're just going to keep trying. Now, a career in professional football certainly looks a lot more appealing now than it did a few years ago, certainly when you started playing football. Is that something you'd like to pursue? Have you thought about Definitely, it? Definitely, yeah. I think my dream would be to be a professional footballer with Bournemouth, you know. Um, I love this club and 
we'll see what happens with the continued development, you know, what, what can happen in two years. Already so much has changed, so we'll see what happens. And obviously, again, we're talking a few years down the line, you're still only 18, you're still only doing your A-levels, but you are clearly a very intelligent girl. Would you have any thoughts on what you might do if, you know, professional football didn't happen? Definitely. So it's always been massive for me, as much as I love football and love sport, to keep the education as well. So that's always, I've always maintained that um, no matter what. So that's why, you know, I've always worked really hard. I bring my revision on the coach because I want to get the best grades possible. And I'm looking at applying for university now. Um, going through all that process is a bit of a pain, but, you know, it has to be done. Um, applying, sorting all out, and then potentially, you know, deferring for a year to play football, you know, just keeping all these options open. But definitely I've looked at all careers in sport, looked at sports scientists, sports psychologists, PE teaching, coaching, anything, as long as it's to do with sport. And, you know, I really enjoy helping others. We'll see what happens. Does that psychology learning help you with your football? Definitely, yeah. I think it's no secret that I'm quite an anxious person you now with nerves before games and you know, I can struggle a lot from a mental point of view on the pitch and off the pitch as well. So, you know, learning about it and trying to apply it to myself is really important. And again, the girls, especially the past few weeks, the girls have been really incredible with recognising that and helping me through it. Um, so, yeah. We've got 10 to tackle now, 10 either or questions, quick fire Ooh, ones. Okay. Starting with Bournemouth Beach or Sandbanks Beach? Sandbanks Beach. Abba or Take That? Oh, Abba. Nando's or Chicken and Blues? Chicken and Blues. Brilliant, that's good. For yeah, one of our, I'm actually one not, of don't, our... don't tell anyone, I'm actually not a massive Nando's fan. Oh. Really? I yeah. heard that you had a team social at Nando's the other week. Yeah, I couldn't go. I didn't oh go no. to the team social in Nando's. I was in London, unfortunately. I know, but yeah, not a massive Nando's fan. Skydive or zip wire? Ooh. Haven't done the zip wire at Bournemouth, but skydive. Always wanted to skydive. Ferrari or Lamborghini? Ferrari, 100%. That's always wanted a red Ferrari. You know, my dad's always wanted one, and then now I want one. Yeah, a Ferrari. <laughs> Who would you rather partner in attack, Harry Kane or Alan Shearer? Oh, i going to say Harry Kane. Cricket or rugby? Oh, my god brother's going to kill me because he's really good at cricket, but I'm going to say rugby. <laughs> <laughs> Beth Mead or Kira Walsh? Beth Mead. Devon or Cornwall? Ooh, Cornwall. Who would you prefer a 50-50 tackle with? Amber Treewick or <laughs> Helen Blizzard? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't answer that. I actually cannot answer that. Oh, no. Can I just say inconclusive for that one? I can't answer it. <laughs> we'll leave it. Given that we've got a big game in a couple of weeks, we'll leave it as inconclusive. <laughs> yeah, good answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, Lucy, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. And, of course, we wish you the best of luck against Portishead here at Vitality Stadium. Amazing. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. Now, tickets for that one are still available. They can be bought online, over the phone or in person at the club's ticket office. We'd love you to all be part of a record-breaking crowd. Just before we finish, Zoe, I've got something um, for Lucy. Um, my wife was clearing out the garage yesterday <laughs> and in amongst all the cobwebs and spiders, she found our record collection. No and we would way. like to donate our record collection to you for being such a great guest Stop on the it. podcast. Really? Oh, it's the best day ever. I feel like I should clap, but there's only three of oh, us in the room, so it'd be a bit silly. Gosh. <gasps> oh, my days. Oh, that's Olivia Newman John. Oh, can you just can I just come back every week, please? And can you just give me more? <laughs> You've got a lifetime contract on the AFC yeah, Bournemouth you, podcast. Thanks, you know, I'll be here every week. That is amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> well, there we go. If you've enjoyed our club podcast, which has ended with a bit of a twist, we'd appreciate any likes or subscribes on whatever platform you're listening on. Now, our thanks again to Lucy Cooper and from Neil Perrett and myself, Zoe Rundle. We'll see you next time.